Hey everyone, this is Brad from iBuyPower. Today we'll be doing a quick troubleshooting guide for when your PC is turning on but not sending any signal to the display. This is a beginner level guide, so it's designed to be accessible for most users. As with all guides, we recommend that you watch this video through in its entirety before starting. No matter how confident you are, please do not skip a single step unless the guide tells you to. All steps here are included deliberately, and the skipping steps can result in the guide being ineffective. Unless instructed otherwise, always make sure your PC is completely turned off and unplugged while working inside of it. If you get stuck or feel uncomfortable at any point, feel free to reach out directly to our technical support for assistance either via email, phone, or live chat. First, let's make sure you're in the right place. On every power on cycle, the PC will go through three important steps. Power. The PC is receiving power from the power supply. Usually some LEDs will light up and the fans will spin. Post, short for Power On Self Test. The PC's motherboard will initialize and check all attached hardware. Your display will activate, usually showing a company logo. Post is required to access the system's BIOS. Boot, if your PC has an operating system like Windows, it has successfully booted once you see your login screen or desktop. This guide only covers a no post scenario. For no power or no boot, please refer to their respective guides. For this guide, you should prepare the following tools, a few Phillips head screwdrivers, and optionally something to cut zip ties. Make sure your hands are clean and dry before touching any components, and never touch any electrical contacts under any circumstance. First, make sure to check your display is set to the correct input. While some displays will auto-detect inputs, some need to be manually changed. If you have access to spare or different cables, try those out as well. Also, make sure you are using the correct outputs from the PC. Some PCs come with multiple clusters of display output ports. For most systems, this will mean integrated ports on the motherboard, as well as dedicated or discrete ports on the graphics card. By default, integrated graphics are disabled when a graphics card is installed, so be sure you are plugged into the graphics card's ports. Sometimes there are plastic plugs covering ports on your card, so you may need to remove them. Alternatively, you may need to purchase an adapter or different cable. As a general rule of thumb, DisplayPort can be adapted to any other type of cable. If the issue is not with your display or cable, we will move onward to the components inside the PC. Start by powering off and unplugging your PC, and by removing your component side panel. The first component we will be looking at is RAM, or memory. RAM will usually be located on the upper right side of your motherboard next to your CPU. They may or may not have heat sinks on them, but always look more or less like this. We will be reseating the RAM in this system. It is recommended for this step that you lay the PC down on its side with the motherboard facing upwards towards you. Check either side of the sticks of RAM to see if there is a release paddle. Some motherboards have these only on one side, others have them on both. Press down on these paddles to release the RAM. Then, using your fingers, Press down firmly on the outer edges of the stick to snap it back into place. If you end up fully removing the RAM from the slot, check the orientation before replacing it. All RAM has a notch that corresponds to the slot and only allows it to plug in one orientation. When installing RAM, make sure that you are only using the force of insertion to close the release tabs. Do not attempt to help the RAM by closing the tabs while installing. If your system has more than one stick of memory, at this time it will probably be a good idea to try the PC with one stick at a time. Pull out and place them back one at a time and see if anything changes. This will help you identify if there is a bad stick or a bad slot. Remember to make sure the PC is off and unplugged while changing parts. The next thing we will try reseating is the graphics card. Start by removing the power connectors from your card. There may be zero, one, or two of these. There is a clip you will need to squeeze to release them. It should not require a lot of force to remove. Next, use a screwdriver to remove the screws that hold the card to the case. Depending on your PC, these screws may be located on the inside or outside of the case. Some cases have a small cover that needs to be removed or moved to properly access the card. Start with the screw that is most in line with the circuit board of the card and work your way down. Cards can require one, two, or three screws depending on the size, most require two. In some cases, the bracket can become pinned under the screw further down. You may need to just loosen that screw a bit. Try to wobble the card around. If 
the card is properly free, you should be able to get a few millimeters of play. Once the card is loose, focus your attention on the motherboard slot where the card is inserted. Follow that slot to the right, and you will find a plastic tab. Push down on that tab towards the motherboard, and the card will release so you can pull it straight out. There should be almost zero resistance to removing the card. You may need to rotate the card a bit to clear obstacles, but otherwise you're only carrying the weight of it. If it appears to be stuck, go back through the previous steps to free it. Installation is the reverse of removal. Simply install the card back the way it was and try the machine again. If neither reseeding RAM nor video card worked, the last step is to try clearing the motherboard's CMOS. Every motherboard has a CMOS battery. They are these nickel-sized button cell batteries mounted somewhere in the board. In some cases, it may be hidden by the graphics card. We already covered how to remove the card, so refer to those earlier instructions. Once you find the battery, remove it from its housing by locating the flexible metal tab next to it, then pushing that tab away from the battery until it springs out. Leave the CMOS battery out for at least 5 minutes with the PC's power cord left unplugged. Then snap the battery back into place, plug in the power cord, and turn on the computer. If you get a display that asks whether you want to enter setup or load defaults, go ahead and load the defaults to continue. If at this point you are still unable to get your PC to post, then you likely have some manner of hardware issue. This would be the time to proceed to some advanced troubleshooting with our support staff. Well that concludes our guide. Hopefully your issue was resolved somewhere along the way. Uh, if you have comments or concerns, feel free to leave them as a comment on this video or hit us up on social media. Thank you.